Hi, so what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how you go about installing MarkEdit um, on a Mac. Uh, I have um, gone ahead and done some of the process already, so I'm just going to walk through what they are, um, mostly due to time constraints, but uh, I think that this will give a, a pretty good idea of the process that you go through. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do when downloading MarkEdit to a Mac is you're going to need to go and get MarkEdit. Um, go to the website um, that uh, my website, people, OregonState.edu, reset mark edit, or the easiest way to find it is to just from Google or your favorite search engine type in mark edit. It should be the first thing on the list. Um, go to downloads, and on the download links, you're going to want to download the one that says zip download linux.other. And when you do that, you will end up getting a folder like this one, mark edit linux. And when I open this folder up, you will find in it a text file called install.txt. You want to open that up. And that gives you the instructions, the rest of the instructions that we're going to have to follow. Uh, we go down to the bottom, which says Mac OS install procedure. So, all right, so dependencies, the things that you have to have in order to install uh, MarkEdit on a Mac. Um, unfortunately, uh, there isn't just a general installer to install um, everything. And this is partly because MarkEdit runs uh, a lot like Java in that it's a runtime, uh, there's a runtime environment that you run uh, MarkEdit through. MarkEdit's developed in C Sharp, so it's primarily developed um, on a uh, Windows 7 desktop machine and tested primarily on a uh, Linux Ubuntu instance using Mono um, on a Linux build. The, uh, there's also a version of Mono that can run on a Mac. And so in order to run MarkEdit natively on a Mac, you can download Mono and follow these setup instructions. Otherwise, um, I think what a lot of people do if they run Macs is they keep, they install MarkEdit on a Windows partition. Um, but if you want to run MarkEdit natively in a Mac, these are your instructions. So the first thing you need to do is get your dependencies. And the first dependency you're going to need to install is Mono. Um, and to go with Mono, you're going to need to get the X11 server, which is part of the Mac operating system. Um, sometimes installed by default, oftentimes not. It's a utility off the Mac, the Mac um, install disk. So I've already installed it. Um, you can see it in your Applications folder. If you have it, it's Applications folder, Utilities. And if you look in your Utilities, here's my X11 server. Um, that's just uh, the windowing portion of the Mono application. Um, I don't need that running. Okay, so I've got mine installed. So then what I would do is I would go to um, the Mono project. The Mono project is uh, www.mono-project.com or again in your favorite search engine just type in Mono project and there'll be the first uh, link on the page. You're going to want to go to downloads. So there's a download link here and I prefer um, get the latest stable release. So right now these instructions um, have been verified on 10 point or 2.10. So right here you have a Mac OS install. Um, the Mono instance will run either on um, Intel or PowerPC, uh, but you have to be running either uh, Leopard or uh, the uh, Leopard or Snow Leopard version, so 10.5 or 10.6 series. And if you're running uh, Lion, which I think is 10.7, it most likely will work too. Um, they deprecated uh, support for Tiger um, uh, not too long ago. So anyways, if you look at the requirements here, you'll see for Windows Forms applications, it requires the X11 server. MarkEdit is a Windows Forms application. Um, it doesn't use the GTK Sharp installs, the GTK libraries. Uh, at some point, maybe I'll look at it, but at this point, um, since the uh, Windows Forms libraries runs uh, really well on um, the Linux builds that I use and runs you know, natively in uh, Windows, that's, that's what we're using at the moment. All right, so you would download this version. So you can either download Intel if you have an Intel framework, PowerPC if you have a PowerPC, or Universal if you don't know what you got. Um, it'll install all the components. Um, it doesn't take that much time. Downloading is about the what downloading's what takes the most time. So you would download that and install it. I've installed mine. Um, I can go ahead and look at it. If I open up a terminal here, I have a terminal window. I'm going to go ahead and open a new one because I'm going to use that window for something else. And if I type in mono version, 
I see that currently I have 10.12 on my installation. Now, here's an important note um, on the mono part. If you look at the architecture, you'll see it's x86. I'm not quite sure why, but um, when uh, mono is installed um, on a Mac, and it seems to only be on a Mac because this isn't the case on a Linux machine, um, the uh, architecture is currently set to 32-bit. So even though the op the version of when of Mac the the Mac version I'm running right now is Snow Leopard and it's defaulted to a 64-bit operating system, the architecture for Mono is going to default to 32 bits. So that means that the next set of dependencies that I install have to be installed as 32-bit 32 32-bit process. And so let's talk about the next set of dependencies. The next set of dependencies are only needed if you're going to use Yaz. Um, and I mean, Z, if you're going to use Yaz, which means you're going to use the Z39.50 client. If you're going to use the Z39.50 client, you have to install um, what's called uh, Yaz, which is the uh, um, Z39.50 components created by Index Data. Um, they're what power the mark edit um, Z39.50 client. So there are a couple dependencies. First, you need to download the Xcode tools. Those are found at the Apple Developer Network site. You can just download those directly. Um, or get them off your install disk. Next you need to install Mac ports. So if I go um, to my, uh, my uh, pop it open here, you can search for it. It's macports.org or you can search for Mac ports from Google. The easiest way to install it is if you look down here you'll see that uh, there is an installing Mac ports link and you'll find that if you go down to Mac OS package installer you can actually find a package installer for Snow Leopard or Leopard and download that directly to your machine. Once you've downloaded it, uh, follow these instructions. The last thing that you'll do after you install is you run this program called sudo port v self update and that updates the uh, Mac ports um, directory information so it knows so it's it's basically current so that it knows kind of what it is that you're asking it to download alright so Mac ports is installed I've already done that um, and now comes the the most um, the the part of the process that's the longest once you have Mac ports installed you can install Yaz it's a simple command um, and it's in the installer here but before you run that command you have to tell Mac ports that you want the next set of uh, software that you install installed as thir installed for 32-bit uh, processes uh, for a um, x86 architecture. So what you're going to do is if you look here in the instructions, once Mac port is installed, there's a directory that's given where Mac ports is configuration files installed. So you would cd to opt local next set uh, Mac ports and you're going to edit the Mac ports comp file and what you're going to look for is you're going to look for the build architecture right here by default this is commented out and it defaults to a 64-bit system we have to uncomment that and save this file so that we can compile our version of Yaz, the Yaz libraries and dependencies for 32-bit processes so I'll uncomment that save the file, file saved, then all I need to do is type in sudo port install yaz and I'm not going to run this because that process takes um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 15 minutes because you're not just installing um, yaz but you're installing a bunch of dependencies that go around it somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, I'd like to say somewhere in the neighborhood of about eight to nine different packages, most of them relating to the XML components that Yaz uses, the language components that Yaz uses, the Z, the, the um, compression components that Yaz uses. So you've installed Yaz. So let's, I'm going to assume you've installed Yaz. So um, Yaz gets installed into this directory here, op local lib, and we can look at that real quick. And there's a reason why we need to know where this is. And if we look for the file, we can see that 
I've installed it and I have libyaz4 installed. This has been installed for 32-bit processes. And so what I need to do is in the mark edit Linux file, the mark edit Linux directory, and I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal to do this here. Whoops, wrong one. I'm going to open a new shell. And I'm going to go to my directory. Alright, the file I want to open is called um, is called yazsharpdill.config Alright, and so what we need to do is when we open up the zoomyaz.config file, we need to modify um, what's called a dill map to tell it where the Yaz um, library lives. Now in MarkEdit, we've used the current version of MarkEdit uses Yaz 4.32, Yaz 4.64 as target dills, uh, libraries that point in the Windows and Linux builds that point to where Yaz lives. So you need to tell it, okay, while in Mark Edit, it's looking for those libraries, the real library actually lives in this location. Um, you can actually link it to any version of Yaz. So um, if you have an older version of Mark Edit, you might have uh, see the mapping file like this. where it points to uh, Yaz 3. Um, you can actually just redirect it to 4. Because MarkEdit uses um, signatures that are available since uh, basically Yaz 1. Anyways, we um, make sure that we point the target to the directory where our version of Yaz lives, and then we save the file. And I'm not going to save mine since it already has it. All right, so we save the file, and that's it. Now all we need to do is we open up a terminal, we log in to the directory we're at, I'm at that directory right now, and we run the markedit Linux bootloader. So markedit uses the same bootloader for Linux and Mac, so we do mono, um, Linux bootloader, run it. What that does is it sets the directories for all of the files that live in markedit that usually would be windowized. Um, and those are primarily the folders that deal with the XSLT stuff, the configuration information, and that's it. Now we're ready to run MarkEdit. MarkEdit's been installed, so I can actually run it. I do mono, MarkEdit, exe, and we let it run, and MarkEdit will boot right up here. It's going to take a second because I'm screen capturing, but that's all right. Wait for it to uh, the mono runtime to load for the first time, and there it is. And we can go ahead and close it and see if it runs, if it boots up faster. And we can see that it does. Once the mono runtime has been set once, it runs, sets right up. There are preferences. We can pop these open here and see the preferences. Um, Mark Edit uses a uh, preview mode. Um, we have language preferences, so we can set a particular language to use. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set my language for my file to just general Arial. I don't know what it is right now, but I'm going to set it to general Arial. Um, we have our mark XSLT, which we see. Um, updates, those don't apply. File associations, those aren't apply. And then the main thing we have to set on first run is we set the mono path. So this is the path to where Mono runs. We do that so that MarkEdit can use um, the uh, application, uh, some ancillary applications. And if we need to, we can set a temp path. This obviously isn't a path that exists in real life, but that's all right, because what MarkEdit will do is it'll actually use the system temp path. So we go ahead and uh, tell it OK. 
the file gets set. I changed the language, so the language file changed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and restart Mark Edit. On the Mac, it doesn't refresh this window screen quite as well as it does on other systems. But anyways, you can see the language now is running Arial. Um, all of the paths have been set, and Mark Edit runs. We can go ahead and go to the Z39.50 client, and we can go ahead and give it a try. And so This is searching the OSU libraries, map of Oregon. Tell it to search. We can see that it does indeed find records just like it should. And I can open it up, see the record, download the record, do what I need to. Um, I have two records here, the mark, one that's a mark record, one that's a non-mark record. Um, I can go ahead and open those up and look at them. So here's my one mark record that I've got. We can see that it's two pages worth, so I can scroll to the next page and see the records. And then we have the mark breaker, where we can actually break the file that's right here. Execute it and edit the records directly. And there you go. So Mark Edit running on a Mac. Um, I will admit, uh, even though Mark Edit runs fine natively on a Mac, um, you're going to run into occasional UI issues. Um, some of those UI issues are related to, um, like for example, when we were looking at the preferences window, um, the screen didn't quite refresh uh, like you'd think it should. Um, when we changed the language, when the, the application reset the language files, it didn't reset it exactly like you would think. Um, part of that comes to is done because of um, mono support on a Mac. Um, it's slowly coming. Um, it's good enough that I can actually say yes now you can run Mark Edit natively on a Mac. Um, but I say that with the caveat that you are going to occasionally run into um, UI issues where some of the screens don't quite redraw all the way. It shouldn't affect functionality. Um, but, you know, it's there. Um, so if you decide to run Mark Edit on a Mac uh, and you run into things, I'm always happy to hear about them. Um, and if I hear about them, I, I make an effort to see if there's ways that we can work around it and um, actually look at addressing some of the screen redraw issues because there are some things I can do to try and um, work on fixing that. Um, so uh, if you run into those, let me know. Otherwise, uh, what will happen is that um, now that uh, now that Mark, you know, Mark Edit does run on a Mac and Mono supports it well enough to do it, um, I will uh, add the Mac operating system to part of my tests and uh, we'll continue to work on seeing if we can make it where the application works um, uh, better and uh, a little bit more like a native application uh, for Mac users that want to run Mark Edit directly within the operating system rather than um, through a partition, uh, like for example a Windows or a Linux partition. Okay, uh, so if you have questions, feel free to contact me. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, um, have good luck.